So what is the, there are three aspects to it. The basic component is of course the content itself, what the content that one wants to manage and for most part, for all part of my talk, I'll be uh, referring to digital content of course. How do we manage, how do we need to manage this? And of course we need a system in which uh, we implement certain techniques to manage content. So that um, in a nutshell is uh, what is a content management system. So the management of content refers to, of course, the process of storing um, content. It's done in the different ways. And it's associated with workflows. When I say workflows, I mean, um, I, I cannot sort of give a, a prescription across the desk saying that this is a workflow for you or this is the workflow for content management system. This cannot be said. Because each content management system uh, has got its own uh, set of users, the end users, maybe middle level users, or whatever that are around, the, which are essential stakeholders in a content management system environment. So any CMS uh, design is, uh, any uh, system, uh, service design around the CMS is based upon the requirement of users. Okay, so for what particular thing that you are, you are creating a content management system. For example, I want to con um, put together a system which will help my uh, students to manage their course better using digital content that we put, put up for them. In other words, such systems are known as e-learning systems. So workflows depends upon the end users and what are the requirement and uh, accordingly uh, we do th uh, that, okay? So we, uh, of course, we manage uh, also the content uh, in, re in relation to such workflows, which are, again, in relation to the user's needs. So like I said, for most part, I talk about digital content. Some people said that even physical objects can be maintained, uh, can be managed, but that we used to do in the simple bibliographic world by creating some kind of descriptions for objects we used to try to manage collections. So content management, uh, uh, to summarize, can, is a collection of tools, technique, and processes that support the collection, managing, and publishing of information in any form or medium. And particular emphasis can be given here to the word publishing because in content management system, we can use content and on the fly publish uh, certain, um, say, notes or whatever information resource in short, we can generate it according to the need of the user. So that is one thing uh, which is uh, uh, remarkable, uh, which is, um, I, I can say, a different feature when we compare to our usual digital library systems. Because uh, many people, when I talk at fora like this, they ask uh, me, oh, you're talking about content management system, but I also heard you're talking about digital libraries and digital repositories. How are these two different? It's true that in both the um, digital repositories uh, or libraries and content management system, basically we, we deal with some content, right? But then they are markedly different, like I said, in content management system, we cater to certain workflows and create certain services, some bring out certain products meant for certain communities, right? Digital libraries are digitally managing libraries, digital content, digitally managing digital content. As librarians, we know what all we have to do to give the better information services, and we try to do it in the digital libraries. So that's one distinction, though I don't like to split hairs, whether this is that, whether that is that, as long as we understand the concept. So the system is itself um, does a lot of things. It Basically, uh, I, I go on uh, telling this also to my friends when I go and visit their digital library uh, site or I am talking to um, them about the digital library. They say, uh, very proudly, they say, my digital library has uh, two million uh, resources or mine has, uh, and I keep silent because I can't even boast of uh, 2,000 documents. <laughs> so uh, the people keep on using the size as uh, one of the defining um, uh, ways uh, or uh, boasting ways for the digital library. So what, I, do you think that if I tell my end user that I have two million documents in my digital library, is that one way of impressing them? Maybe the first minute they will be impressed and the next minute itself they go and try their hands on it and if something that they want is not found, that's the end of the impression. <laughs> 
So the emphasis here is not on, uh, maybe it's good to have big collections, but then we have to put in place efficiency. The efficiency in retrieval, in addressing the, uh, what the user wants at the time that he or she needs it. So these things have to be built in, um, whether we were talking again about huge digital collections as we dealt with in digital libraries or in content management systems. So the simple example uh, is again the e-learning system, though e-learning today is defined not as content management system, but I broadly see it as one. And um, if one of our student is going to go and um, uh, search for a particular uh, unit or a lesson that he wants on the day that he wants to write his assignment and he doesn't find it, then it, the whole management system means nothing to him or her. So uh, having efficiency at every level, including retrieval, is something that we have to achieve. So basically, uh, it's, it's all this. It's uh, the content management system must allow, of course, collection, storage, all that, then publishing and also editing. And it should work basically as a collaborative platform. Okay? And in a, in a kind of a community environment, maybe it's distributed, not in the single room or something, but still build a community around the system and the service so that it can be managed as a, as a community. It, it does not mean somebody's, uh, the whole set of people associated with it are physically at one place. So uh, I don't think uh, the, the classic um, CMS definitions are these, but I simply consolidated uh, these well, my impression on what is content management systems uh, using the different definitions that are available. So basically the benefits are these, that we can e easy content creation. I think uh, many of you have gone through the uh, pain whenever you had to create some content for the web, say for your own institutional web or for your own uh, library website. You, you had your uh, challenges, right? First it was HTML, then it was XML, and you're, you're supposed to learn a tool, you're supposed to learn something, you have to uh, learn how to make a layout, you have to learn how to populate, all this. But in content management system, at least uh, these are, uh, this is fairly easy, okay? And easily you can edit it. It assures re reusability of the resources that are there. You can publish. There is also versioning control, which is a very good feature for somebody like me because by the time I, I make a PPT itself, I'll at least have some six versions. And the last version will be somewhere sitting here. I'll be correcting it just before coming up on stage. So there'll be one version created just before I speak always. Okay. So this, how do I uh, find the resource that I want when the, when the file name is the same and I have created five versions of the same? Do I put, in, put it in as five resources? or one, one resource with this many versions. Okay. So versioning control, and of course there are a lot of uh, uh, templates uh, available uh, which uh, people need not uh, design and all. I'm very bad at it myself. I, I, I don't have the patience, time, or maybe even the aptitude and the skills to make templates. So I'm very grateful to people who provide them. So there, is, uh, there are some uh, automatic uh, ways of uh, getting these things. Uh, there is, of course, once you uh, follow, you, you, you don't have to do this on the system. You have to set the pattern for your content management system before you go to it, and then put in whatever that content you want and uh, the structure and all that. Once that is there, it's very easy to achieve consistency. And uh, like uh, uh, Professor Prasad was saying, uh, at uh, our center, the, the Documentation Research and Training Center, we never ever use uh, any paid uh, software, any proprietary software, any commercial software. We only use open source software. And uh, there were also a, a few interesting questions uh, raised uh, at that time. I think I have to qualify that statement saying that we use true open source software. I do not know how I define that now. <laughs> if somebody just floated something f with some other intention that tomorrow they will make money out of it, I don't encourage that. <laughs> Whereas if somebody writes a bit of code, a small code, good, bad, or whatever, ugly, but still make it available to people, the source code, and then leave it for the public to improve upon it, to use it, to distribute it, yes, we call that open source. 
So we do not, uh, across the board, endorse any tools, or we do not want to criticize any open source tool. Open source is that, that source code is available, period. Okay, then people can deploy it, distribute it, use it, not use it, it's their right, uh, basically. So, uh, I mean, uh, why, we, why we do this? Because I can give an example of a very, very uh, popular uh, LMS tool that uh, is there in India, but I should not take much time, and uh, which is uh, commercial software. And my own students, after graduating with us, they joined that company to give technical support. They went to the user's uh, campus. They got uh, very nice uh, uh, earful on that software and said, this is not working, that's not functioning, and all this thing. And my student said, OK, we'll try to fix the problem. To fix the problem, the student needs the source code. He needs to look at what's got wrong. He's the employee of that organization, but the organization did not expose, even give the code to the technical support person to fix the problem. So this is something contrary to open source, where you can do nothing for, for being scared about the few uh, dollars or um, rupees that people can make. So I'm just giving clarification of, we support true open source in the true philosophy of OSS. Okay, if Oracle floated something as OSS and it's not truly OSS, we don't support it. As simple as that. Okay, anyway. Um, the, in CMS also, at DRTC, we tried uh, two, which are very popular. One is the Joomla, which is by default open source, because I use it. <laughs> okay. And the other one is Drupal that we tried. Uh, Drupal, we found, has got uh, much more uh, uh, compliance with the semantic web uh, uh, tools and techniques, so it suits us better. But Joomla is not, was not at all bad, because um, there was a huge live community working with Joomla, uh, which, uh, which itself offered a lot of um, uh, question the, on the forum, the question answers were there, a lot of solutions were there, and Joomla was good, and all these templates and all third-party software that could be easily integrated and used. So we did uh, create a few uh, services using that, but of late it is more Drupal than Joomla. So these, uh, uh, the, the main thing that goes in favor of these when we shortlisted is that they are web standards compliant. They are world standard compliant, and hence we had no issues uh, simply to use this. And they were cost effective for us because uh, we simply took their free, free of cost to take, and we didn't take any other service. We simply loaded them and used them. So in that way, they are very cost um, effective. So you, you have, uh, like I said, workflows that you can um, customize to your requirement, to your, your, your user's requirement, and use them. There's uh, maintenance is, um, much, much easier. I, I'm not, I do not have any IT qualification in my life at all. I simply uh, do not have. But still, even for a person like me who is a layman uh, in the formal IT technology uh, terminology, it, it, I could use it uh, quite comfortably. So like I said, there are many third-party softwares or plugins to use, um, like when you are using uh, uh, a CMS, uh, but for example, we uh, put up services for, um, we put up a content management system for, um, as a project for the UNAIDS from uh, New Delhi. And um, uh, we built a lot of functionality around it, whatever the UNAIDS people wanted. And then they used to, um, they were, uh, he was a particular friend of us for whom we did the project. He used to go to Europe, Geneva, somewhere here or there, and look at some, some service and be very interested in a certain, certain functionality. Come back to India, why don't we introduce this into the CMS? Then he goes, oh, we introduce that. Then he goes and sees another. This is very interesting. I think this should also be part of the CMS. <laughs> so, since he was a friend, we could not say no. But what we found was there was already a lot of available third-party software and um, uh, functionalities that we could easily incorporate and use it. So we, we, we did that uh, for them. So the point I'm trying to make is uh, these have huge developer communities around them, such uh, uh, open source uh, uh, CMS software that really enable you to put a lot of functionalities together with the least amount of uh, work or uh, technical expertise on ground. Okay, so generally CMSs are used for these functions, for storing, for controlling, revising, publishing, and also as uh, repositories, like I said, uh, if we use it as an e-learning system, we put a lot of um, 
documents, maybe uh, lecture notes, maybe uh, lessons and such uh, uh, collections of it. So the, the features are like unending. Like I said, if you go on looking at the tools and techniques available for CMSs, there will be unending uh, number of features, but at least these are the main ones that I tried to list over here. You have um, access control, not that we cared in our uh, uh, instance, we allowed everybody to access every part of the CMS, but that's not always true. You will have uh, certain groups, you want to give them some authentication, what they can use, and certain groups, uh, students can use the notes material, teachers can have access to the evaluation and the question paper, making modules and uh, certain things. Then version control, then it has in store a lot of page templates, like I was always talking, uh, like I already said, images and other assets that you can use. As, a, as its library, it has a content repository into basically into which you, you populate the text and the other resources that you want to manage as content. And of course, the uh, functionality to publish this, which basically creates web pages uh, using certain set templates, or you can create your own. So these are, these are the uh, basic types. Now, Content, manage, content management systems are CMSs, they are, content, they are meant for managing content. But depending upon the content that we expect them to manage, they are classified into these systems. They may be web content management system, where they manage the web content, or simply document management system, or for software, just you, uh, some company wants to manage that, or have heterogeneous content like having multimedia. It depends upon what, what kind of content uh, you want that system to manage. Then accordingly, they are uh, christened uh, uh, different names. So we have web content management system, document management systems, record management system, digital asset management system, enterprise content management system, and so on and so forth. So basically, uh, we used CMS as a uh, generic term, but inside that, it could be any one of these. How am I doing on time? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> so uh, I basically told you the different um, types. So there is, um, I simply will uh, conclude with uh, what are the uh, benefits. Like I told you, uh, it's not necessary that I put a content, all content on this system and everybody has to come and work over here. We can work on in a distributed environment. You can have roles defined to certain users of your system who is an author. They can, they can uh, contribute from where they are. They can even edit the resources. Uh, that's distributed authorship. Efficiency, like I already told you, can uh, you, you, you can reuse, you can uh, edit, you can uh, do it in distributed uh, time, so uh, uh, adding all kinds of navigation. So it's, uh, that way it's very efficient. I have used, um, for most part, digital library systems only. For only least part, when I was dealing with the UN uh, AIDS project, I used content management system. There was a market difference of ease, especially when I used the CMS. Uh, rather than just the, the digital library systems are robust, they are meant for certain activities, but I, I found that these features were not uh, available, what I found in containment. So in the end, what we thought, you simply add the digital library also as one part of the content management system and use these features so can we, we can easily ma manage that content also within a Drupal environment. So that's uh, one of the things that we did. So you can have uh, global updating, like uh, I have said here, add link site-wide, change text, or do any other editing that uh, you want. You can time the events, like you can say uh, displays for a specific period of time. It has to be shown after a particular period of time or hidden after a particular period of time. Or for example, if a student is enrolled only for uh, a semester, then that content He's a bona fide user for that semester and it will be visible for him for that semester. Something like that, okay? So you can have uh, integration with uh, blocks, you can have syndication and such features, okay? So I'll just end with the components. Oh, the figure changed, okay. 
and that in a uh, nutshell is uh, the broad components of uh, content management uh, system. Thanks very much. Just put our hands together, that will be nice. Just.